we're here at Auburn University at Montgomery, and today we will be demonstrating and explaining the viewpoints. My, my name is Faith Roberts. I'm Kashara Wheeler. I'm Ariana Adams. I'm Tony George. And I'm Olivia Crutchfield. So the viewpoints are how a character or a person moves and lives within space and time. And there are six different viewpoints. We have space, shape, time, emotion, movement, and story. Space consists of topography, architecture, and spatial relationship. Spatial relationship can be used to define a relationship between two characters. So, for example, if I'm over here and Kishara is over there, we don't have a very close relationship in a story. But if I'm here with my arm around Tony, you can see that we're friends, and that would give you a relationship. Topography is used to make a story look more interesting. So if I'm at a high topography and Kishara is at a low topography, this is more interesting than if we were both at a high topography. Then you can use architecture, such as this block. Architecture can be used to express an emotion like sadness, or you could hide behind it for fear. Architecture can be used in multiple ways. It's using an inanimate object to help you tell a story. Traffic patterns are also part of space. Traffic patterns are a way that a person moves through space. In Medea, the spatial relationship between her and Jason is a far away relationship because she hates him for cheating on her. So if we were doing Medea, then Medea would never really be close to Jason because she hates him. She would be close to her children because she loves them. That is space. I will be demonstrating shape. Shape can be lines and curves, it can be individual or a group shape. So for an individual shape, a straight shape could be like this and I can also turn it into like a curve shape or I can go to a group shape. So for my book of law, hits and turn by press for a while, my character would mainly have a straight shape, she's mainly straight up and just like focused on like what what she's angry about basically. I will be demonstrating time. Time is made of tempo, duration, and repetition. Tempo is how fast or slow some a character moves within play. Uh, duration is how long they will be doing something as if I was moving very slow or very fast and repeating it. And repetition is also a part of this as I was still repeating what I was doing. In my monologue, Nora is a very fast talker and I feel like she would be very repetition-like moving with her dress or the way she would talk and move her hands. Um, so for emotions, there are um, eight, eight emotions that you can express. Um, there is happiness, sadness, love, rage, awe, disgust, uh, might, and fear. Um, for those uh, emotions, they help you to express whatever that character is feeling. And you go into those emotions from a state of bliss. A state of bliss is just a state of neutrality that you use to um, come back to so that you can drop out of the emotion that you're feeling. Um, going into the emotion, though, you have to find a trigger. A trigger is just an image that's in your head uh, or that you think of to try to get you there to express that emotion. So if you just close your eyes and you just think about whatever it is that makes you angry, and you have to find out where it enters and where it enters at, whether it be your fingers or your chest or anywhere, that is your entry point. An entry point is just a place on your body where you first feel the eruption of that emotion. And then it just courses through your whole body until, it just, until you feel it everywhere, until you feel the anger everywhere, and then you go back to a state of bliss. And those are the emotions. Um, inside of my uh, monologue, Paul, um, he is kind of like two characters. He is the suave character, and then he is the angry ex-convict. Now, um, the ex-convict displays a lot of rage and a lot of fear inside of the play, um, because he's scared he's going to be found out. 
Um, he's always angry at the assistant he's working for, those kinds of things. But when he's Paul Poitier, the suave, he is always happy and he's always has might and he's always um, confident in himself. And that's how it's displayed throughout the entire monologue. Thank you. So movement is our fifth viewpoint. So within movement, we have kinesthetic delight and kinesthetic response. So kinesthetic delight is an internal stimulus that your body reacts to to really get you in that state of satisfaction. So a kinesthetic delight might be a yawn, or it might be that stretch you take in the morning when you first wake up because it makes you feel really good. And a kinesthetic response is an external stimulus that your body reacts to. So me whipping around to their clapping is a kinesthetic response. So in my monologue from the play Pretty Theft, Allegra yells at her father while he is on his deathbed. And I would, I would say that would be a kinesthetic delight because she has all that anger inside of her so her body is physically making her yell and get louder and louder and cuss and just really go at him and I would consider that a kinesthetic delight within my play. So the next viewpoint or our sixth viewpoint is story. The story begins with gestures. So um, first with gestures you have your pedestrian gestures. Your pedestrian gestures is just a way that anyone would stand. All of the, all of the ways that these people are standing, they are all pedestrian gestures. They're just things that you would see and you wouldn't think twice about. Um, you would just see them um, as a way of characterizing who that person is. And then you have your communicative gestures. It is just the way that you would communicate something to someone else. Pointing, stopping, waving at someone, waving someone off. All of those are communicative gestures. And you have your expressive gestures. Your expressive gestures are things that you just would not normally see on an, in an everyday place. Uh, expressive gesture is an over-physicalization of something that you're feeling, and emotion doesn't matter. It's just an over-physicalization of something in your body. And everyone stop. So from this, you will get into story. Story is something that you would see on stage that gives, you, that gives you a way to express all of the viewpoints. So inside of this, you see space, you see shape, you see emotion on everyone's faces, you see the movement, you see everything, and you see the gestures. All of that comes into story. And then we can link that to Medea. So from here, you will probably see Faith is angry. We will put her as Medea. And you can see Kashira being the boundary in between the two children, if you read it like that. So that is the demonstration of story. Thank you. So, viewpoints not only help you as an actor really get into your character and figure out who your character is, viewpoints is also very crucial when it comes to communication, like giving a speech or a presentation. So going with the very first viewpoint, space. So space can really, that really consist of the spatial relationship that you are with the people you are talking to. So that can be like a small business, you know, um, business meeting, or it could be like a big, huge TED talk. Those are two different spatial relations that give off two different types of feels. And shape, your shape could be the posture you are, how you are giving your speech. So if you're kind of like this, you're just kind of like very casual, so you would see that this would be maybe a casual speech. But if you're very upright, you're at a podium and you're like this, this is more of a serious speech and it gives off a completely different feel. And our next viewpoint is time. So if you're really trying to get across a point, you might repeat a certain phrase or you might repeat it but with, a, with the same tone and the same either aggression or low. You might say it like really like whispery or whatever the case may be. It's really just getting your point across. And then we have emotions. So if you are giving a speech about, you know, a disease or something that's taken millions of lives, you're not going to do it with like, you know, very, you're not going to do it a lot of pep in your step and a lot of like, woohoo, you're going to, you know, you're going to change your emotion based on what you're talking about. 
and movement, our kinesthetic response and delight, that can be the reaction of the audience or whoever you're talking to when giving that speech. So if you see they're not really interacting with you, you can change that response and make, you know, and change how you are giving your speech. And then story, that kind of goes into the order, your talk, your talking points that can go into basically, yeah, the chronological order of how, of what you are talking about when giving your presentation. So, that was the viewpoints. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like that went really well. Did anyone know? <laughs> Good.